In process four, we learn how to handle sheet aluminum and prepare it with ink aid for printing on. The image reflections on the ridge is printed on the aluminum and then the aluminum is glued down to the board. To complete the piece, the edges of the board were sanded and painted with acrylic paint to carry the image around the board. In this process, I'm going to demonstrate how to print on aluminum. Standard uh, hardware store aluminum that will run through uh, inkjet printer. So you have to learn how to cut it, clean it, score it, cut it, make it the shape you need so it'll fit through your printer. So immediately you go to the store, you buy yourself a sheet of aluminum. It comes in all sorts of weights and shapes. This is a standard gauge from a, a large hardware store that says aluminum sheet on the back of it and it's a mill finish. I don't think it really matters as long as it's not too thick. I just want to try it. Uh, other weights that you can get a hold of that are small and handy are in the roofing department at most hardware stores and this is flashing. It's five by seven and this is the right weight. It's a little more flexible. It's nice to work with for small pieces, and it's certainly worth testing your printer with something this size versus trying to hunt down something this size. So immediately what you have to do though is you need to wash the aluminum, get it really clean, because the mill, the factory finish, has an oil to it, an oil um, slick finish to it. You need to remove that oil slick, and that's not as easy as it sounds. So. I find that I begin with a solvent cleaner. The solvent cleaner that I like is a citrus cleaner. It's organic based. It smells pretty good and it's really tough. It works well. So I've put the organic cleaner, the Citrusol, in this little spray container and I'm just going to mist the surface of my aluminum. And take some paper towels and just wipe over it. I have a little bit of something here that I want to work at. This removes all factory nastiness. The only thing it doesn't do is remove scratches. If you have deep scratches that you are going to uh, find unpleasant to look at, then you work at it maybe with some steel wool. Uh, everything you do to the surface of the aluminum will mark it, so you have to decide what marks you're willing to tolerate. After you wash it with the citrus salt, you need to use soap and water, and then the final step will be uh, isopropyl alcohol. Again, something you can find at uh, the pharmacy or the grocery store, just straight isopropyl alcohol. So first the soap and water. This is very, very, little bit of soap, mostly water. You'll know it's clean when you can wipe it with a paper towel and come away with no coloring on the paper towel. This paper towel is still getting up a little bit of a gray tone, which is still some dirt or a little bit of the aluminum possibly. What you want to do is just do this until you get it as clean as possible. Again, it's a little bit dirty, not bad. It's never perfect. Isopropyl alcohol. Once the alcohol dries, it will be ready for the ink aid. Okay, now the next step is to cut the metal to the size that you want to print on. And the reason I cut it down at this stage is because after we print it on it, it's hard to um, cut or handle the metal without moving the surface. Okay, now I have my clean sheet of aluminum. I'm going to show you how to cut it. It's just a matter of scoring and breaking. Yeah, <laughs> you just have to do it very carefully so you don't hurt yourself. And um, you want to use few good materials. One is a really nice sharp utility knife such as this. This is a good one. You can replace the blades very easily with it. I like this utility knife. Put new blades in. The other one is this other uh, utility uh, mat knife. It's a very sharp clean edge that you're trying to develop. 
new blade here, new blade here. This is the breakaway kind, but this is the good breakaway kind, not the cheap ones. I'm going to measure where I want to cut my aluminum. In this case, I want to have a sheet that's 12 inches by 12 inches. So I will have to do two cuts. The first cut, I use a long straight edge and I generally clamp it to the table on both sides of the table. This is just a safety feature for me. Um, I'm not the most graceful sometimes and I can cut myself very easily and I don't like it when I do that. So hardware store clamps, spring clamps. Spring clamps. This is the largest size that I can handle in my hand, so that's why I bought it. There are other sizes that are smaller, that are better for small hands. If your hands aren't strong enough to use these, use uh, C-clamps, the old-fashioned metal C-clamps. I'm clamping this to the table on two sides. I want to hold my straight edge in place and my metal in place while I score this so I don't have to worry about cutting myself. Keeps my hands out of the way. Using the, using the um, finest edge, I simply come down several times, six or eight times is all you need. Remove the clamps. I've scored this down the middle, or at 12 inches in this direction. The next time I score it, I, after I break it, I will have to cut it again to remove 12, uh, the remainder. I want a 12 inch square, that's what I'm shooting for. To break this easily, I find it's really helpful to have a very sharp edge to lean this against on the table. And again, I will use my clamps. I'm using I'm using this uh, straight edge. I'm going to clamp this to the table with my metal so I can break against this sharp edge. This has a sharp edge on it. Not really sharp like it's going to break your hand, uh, cut your hand, but just a clean edge. I'm aligning the edge that I've scored on the metal with the edge of the straight edge. And I'm taking my clamp and clamping it to the table. Now here, this is where it takes two hands sometimes to do this. These clamps are really about at the limit of my hand strength on my right hand. So I now have the metal clamped to the table and I'm holding it in place and it's just a matter of pushing down this edge. And it's going to bend along that, that clean edge of the um, large ruler or metal edge I put. And it's just a matter of flexing and bending this. It takes about five tries, easing it down and lifting it up, and it's going to break again. There it goes. See? Now I have a sheet of aluminum the shape, size I need to print on, but it has no coating on it. I've cleaned it and I'm going to coat it now with ink aid. And you know, I'm seeing some fingerprints, so I'm going to clean it one more time with just a little bit of alcohol. I want to get it as clean as possible. So just take a little more IPA, isopropyl alcohol, just a couple of drops, paper towel. It's perfect, and I will pre-coat it now with ink aid. I use the Ink Aid Type 2. It has a small amount of adhesive in it, so it will adhere to the um, metal without need of any other material. At this point, I am putting down a first coat, letting that dry, and then I come back and I will put a second coat on and possibly a third coat. You definitely need two coats. So, and I will also, each coat, I will put down in two directions. So, I'm going to go forward, front and back, or back and forth. At 
that's it. It'll dry and when it dries I will put another coat of ink aid on it and then when that coat is dry I'll print on it. I've now put the second coat on and I will wait for it to dry. Once it's dry I can put this onto a carrier sheet and run it through the printer. I'm getting ready to print on the uh, 12 by 12 coated aluminum and what I've done is I've placed the double stick tape on the back and I have a carrier sheet all marked out ready for me to place the finished, the pre-finished, pre-coated I should say, uh, aluminum. Just going to put this down and pull off the backing of the double stick tape and I will place this in the corner. It's just as simple as that. So this is going to go through the printer now. See? You can see it's going to hold itself to the carrier sheet and all of this will feed nicely through the printer. Go ahead. Okay. Now I have my metal that I want to, I've got it set up on my carrier sheet and I'm just going to run it through the printer. Believe it or not, it's going to go through the printer. Watch. Just load it in. Okay, I'm aligning it to the bottom and to the top edge. There's a white mark that I line this uh, carrier sheet up to. There it is, it's all ready to go. You can see that the carrier sheet is hanging off the printer, it's soft and laid back, and this is just straight. The reason why you can print on this printer with the metal is because you have a straight paper path and it's gravity feed. It just slowly moves its way through the printer and other and it and prints beautifully on this aluminum. It's nice, it's amazing to me. Ready? Wow, it's gorgeous. Look at that. And it's all done. My I now have my print on aluminum completed. I've run it through the printer. It dried for a few minutes, about a half an hour before I uh, sprayed Chronolone Crystal Clear on it. And I just spray coated it a couple of times to give it a little more uh, ability to handle it. The ink takes a little time to dry. I generally like to let it go overnight after I have uh, sprayed it with the Crystal Clear. Once that's done, I can pull it off the back, um, off the carrier sheet carefully. I spray it generally on the carrier sheet, so I'm transporting these around like this until they're completely dry. It's now dry, so I'm going to pull this off. It comes off fairly easily. The double stick tape's on the back. What I want to do at this point is just work on a clean surface. So I have to put it face down in order to get that adhesive off the back. So uh, wax paper is a really good thing to work on because it's clean and nothing sticks to this. If this was just the least, least bit sticky or a little damp, it would be bad and I don't want to have a problem removing, I don't want to remove any of the ink that's on the surface so I want to work with something clean. All I'm doing is just turning the piece over and removing this double stick tape. This double stick carpet tape is called, um, it's a light tack and it's a newer variety and it is carpet tape but it seems to be, it's intended to be removable. Um, I'm, I'm liking it very much. It's, it's my preference to work with this. There's other double stick carpet tape that's meant for indoor outdoor carpets and that's a little harder to get off. For this purpose you want to have one that you can get off. Um, the reason you need to get this off is because the next step is to glue this metal piece onto something else so that it can be permanent to finish it. Okay, so there it is. It's all ready to go. It's not the least bit disturbed by having been down on its face. I will then take it and in this case I'm planning on gluing it down. I use an adhesive construction glue to glue the metal to the board. Again, I'm using, um, I'm just using a plywood board that I have finished the edges just slightly with a little bit of um, 
vinyl spackle, which I can paint over. I probably will paint it a dark gray or maybe even black. I don't know yet till I'm done. So eventually I just open this. This is where you really do want to use rubber gloves. The other way to apply this is to uh, use the same product comes in a, uh, a caulking tube and a caulking gun. I like this I like this because I can scrape down the sides, open up the can, and it doesn't dry out in there. In the caulking gun, I don't use enough of it to mean um, to manage to keep it from getting so hard in the tube I can't use it again. This seems to be less wasteful. This is just an ordinary um, construction adhesive and it says on the back that it will work with metal and wood. So it's just a matter of getting in the can. This gets disposed of after I the um, credit card that I'm using to spread this, the spreader, I just throw it away. I don't, this is, this is a one use only. What you want to be careful about is just getting this on here and out to the edges. You just want to do your very best to get it spread evenly and out to the edges. And because I am reaching into the container, these gloves are saving my hands. All of this is just going to go in the trash, just like this. All right, that's trash. My hands are clean. There's a little bit of powder from the gloves. That's it. But everything else I'm doing, I have clean hands for. I've already checked my alignment and my orientation. So it's just a matter of putting this down on here and applying a fair bit of pressure and I'm going to do that only by turning it over. So It looks great. I'm just going to put weight on it now. Okay. I think it looks great. A little glue there. This is what I use for weights big old chunk of something marble-like that showed up on my property. I'm not sure how it got here. It just, use what you can find. That works great. That's it. I wait for this to dry overnight and then my piece is ready.